Russia lost 1.5 million tons of oil and petroleum products worth about $540 million as a result of Ukrainian attack on Novoshaktinsk oil products plant in Rostov region last week, general staff of Ukrainian armed forces reported on Monday. The attack was launched on the night leading to June 6 with the use of Ukrainian weapons, the general staff reported. As a result of the strike by Ukrainian kamikaze drones, an explosion and fire occurred at the Novoshaktinsk plant, which is located some 10 kilometers from the border with Ukraine. Fearing the threat of a repeated attack, firefighters did not approach the area for some time. The fire covered an area of 100 square meters, regional governor Vasily Golubev said, adding that, according to preliminary data, there were no dead or injured. On the same day, fire started at Steri Oskol oil depot, less than 100 kilometers from the Ukrainian border, as a result of a drone attack. The strike was the third on the Novoshaktinsk oil refinery. The two previous attacks took place in March and April and caused temporary suspension of the plant's activity, according to Russian media. There was no immediate response from Kiev over the attacks. Ukraine has stepped up attacks on Russian energy facilities in recent months in response to Russian attacks on civilian and energy infrastructure in its own territory. Ukraine has come under continuous drone and missile strikes on its civilian and energy infrastructure since the start of Russia's full-fledged invasion of the country in February 2022. Russian attacks have caused numerous casualties. NATO states may send non-combat troops to Ukraine for stopping Russian invasion, proposals are made. Today, many fear that if Russian President Vladimir Putin wins his war of aggression against Ukraine, countries like Poland and the Baltic states will be his next targets. This was stated by experts of the Kyiv independent media outlet. It is noted that some even suggest that instead of waiting for Russian forces to reach their borders, these countries should preemptively send troops to Ukraine to force Russia to withdraw from all Ukrainian territory and keep Putin at bay. According to the publication, while such sentiments are not yet common in the West, some Western leaders are increasingly aware of the need for swift action. As French President Emmanuel Macron said in a May 2024 speech in Dresden, Russia will be here tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. The implication was that it is easier to fight Russian forces on Ukrainian soil, with Ukraine's army bearing the brunt of the fighting, than it would be to confront Putin's military on NATO territory. It is noted that, however, given that Ukraine will not be invited to join the alliance as long as the war continues, NATO countries should deploy troops on the ground in Ukraine. This would help prevent the loss of additional Ukrainian territory while Ukraine's military continues to fight to recapture the territories occupied by Russia. Kiev Independent says that NATO countries should not deploy combat troops, but rather personnel whose roles would include training, which is currently conducted abroad in costly and logistically complicated ways, as well as clearing minefields and maintaining equipment, thus freeing up Ukrainian troops for actual combat. This approach has already been suggested by some of Ukraine's allies, such as France, while other countries may discreetly provide similar support. Lastly, if Russian forces attack foreign troops in Ukraine, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov already said that military instructors are a legitimate target for Russia, they should expect immediate reprisal. Affected countries should allow weapons that they delivered to Ukraine to intercept incoming missiles and aircraft both in Ukraine and within Russian territory and target Russia's weapons production facilities even deep inside the country.